About a year and a half ago, I installed this ridiculous little stove in here, and it's been keeping us toasty warm ever since. Let me tell you everything I know about it. Is this not ridiculous? So this is our little stove. This thing is the first thing everybody sees when they walk into this trailer. This trailer is about an 80 square foot trailer on the inside. It's a seven by 14 utility trailer that I converted over the past couple years into a travel trailer for us in a tiny home. Oh, hi. Now this little stove is a cubic mini stove. This is the Cub model. So it's the smallest model that they have. They also have a Grizzly, which is a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna tell you why I bought this. Why? So initially I bought it because it looks great. They had great reviews and it had the glass front. And to me, a cozy space, you've gotta be able to see the fire. If you can't see the fire, it's really not that cozy. So that was a must for me. That's why we spent the extra money on this brand of stove. So one of the big questions that I had, and a lot of you probably have, is will this thing actually keep this space warm? Will it keep us warm? And how often do I need to feed it? Feed me! The experience is gonna be different for everybody because it depends on a lot of variables. We're really lucky here in the Midwest, we have hardwood. So what you see back there is some ash, which I use to get the fire going. And then we've got oak, white oak, and it's well seasoned. And what that does is it burns hot and it burns long. Now, how long will this go? Feed me all night long. <laughs> That's right, boy. When it's like fall or spring, it'll get us through the night. But in the depths of the winter, when it's really cold, Basically, I can keep this thing pumping out heat for about four hours, usually two to four hours. It varies depending on the type of wood and how well I control the fire. fire! This is oak, so what I do is, like I said before, we put the ash or the less desirable wood in during the day, and that keeps us warm just fine. And then before bed at night, I get a nice hot bed of coals in the bottom of this thing and I pack it full, which is usually just a couple of these pieces of oak. And then I close the air vents just enough to where it's not just burning all up, it's actually burning more efficiently. And it'll burn four hours at most on a really cold night. And that's enough to where I just get up one time in the night to stoke the fire and we're good to go. And in the morning I get up again, get it rocking, make our coffee, so very happy. And again, this is only about 80 square feet. This thing's rated for 200 square feet, which if you had a really insulated space, sure. Our place isn't that insulated. We've got all these windows, which I cover up at night. Needless to say, heat output, incredibly happy. Another concern I had, which you would have with any type of heating source in a space is, is it safe? So as long as you're keeping fresh air in the space, you've got a carbon monoxide detector, fire extinguisher, and you follow the rules on how far away everything needs to be. I mean, this is breaking the rule at the moment just for display. But as long as you have a good space around it, they're safe. These things, you can also on their website buy a fresh air intake where you can pull fresh air from outside. But we just crack a window, we don't have that. Like anything, if you don't follow the rules, you don't clean the pipes out all the time, then you could have problems. As for cleaning and maintenance, it depends again on what you're burning. If you're burning wet wood or soft woods a lot, you're gonna have a lot of creosote build up and you'll wanna clean them more often because creosote can catch on fire and that can be dangerous. We have double walled three inch pipe here and then five inch insulated pipe at the top and we burn seasoned hardwood. So this thing burns hot and very efficient. So we really get very little creosote build up. So we don't have to clean this thing hardly at all. Obviously every few days we have to clean some of the ash out. Otherwise there's really no maintenance outside of that. And then the way this thing travels, I've got it bolted to this thing. We've got screws down under here, so it's not going anywhere. And the flue pipe on the top comes off when we're on the road, and then I just cover up that hole. So this thing goes down the road, no problem. One thing to think about when you're traveling, this might affect your decision too, is in a lot of places, it's illegal to transport firewood because I mean, like here we've got the emerald ash borer beetle. There's all kinds of stuff out there, bugs and stuff that you don't wanna spread to other timbers and woods in a different location. So if you're gonna travel, you're gonna either have to use those compressed logs or buy wood in the location that you get, which is fine. We actually have a little sawzall that we can bring with us so we can buy wood and then just saw it up. But think about that, because that's something you're gonna have to do probably if you travel. Also, the nice thing about this thing is if this thing gets too hot, I just shut the valve and it immediately dies down. Let's talk about installation. This thing really wasn't too hard to install. Again, this was new to me, so I had to figure out how I was gonna put it through here. 
basically you've got the stove, right? I've got it bolted down. I've actually got reflective insulation behind this wall here, which reflects the heat right back out into the space. You just wanna make sure there's nothing near it that can get hot and they've got rules on the website for what that looks like. For this, we've got three inch double walled flue pipe that goes all the way through to the top. And then up here, it goes into five inch insulated flue pipe that goes around that three inch pipe. So this stuff's insulated, so where it's touching the ceiling, it doesn't get too hot or anything like that. As it goes through the ceiling and out the top, this five inch insulated pipe goes through a silicone membrane which keeps it all waterproof, but it also keeps the heat away from the ceiling and the roof so you don't catch anything on fire. And above that, you've got a piece of flue pipe that pops off. It's got a spark arrestor on top to keep sparks from flying out. And that is supposed to be at least a foot above the highest point on your roof line. We had to cut our pipe down a little bit and make it fit into this space. And obviously I had to build the stand and everything like that. Again, on their website, they build stuff you can bolt straight to the wall with heat shields and they, they sell the whole kit for everything. We kind of pieced it together a little bit. This is part of a flue pipe kit. And then yeah, then I put a mantle on because I'm like that, I thought it was cool. And if you're gonna have a fresh air intake, you've gotta think about where that's gonna be. Cause you'll wanna have a spot where you can get fresh air to come in through the pipe and in the intake. Now one tool that I recommend that I use all the time and this helps me figure out how hot everything is and it's kind of helped me study the stove and figure out how to make it the most efficient is one of these infrared thermometers. I'll put a link in the description on this. And these things are great because right now the top of the stove is 500 degrees. So you could boil water up there, 425, 100. And also I like to put it anywhere where I feel like there's a draft or we're leaking. So yeah, I recommend getting one of these. It'll help you learn your stove and it'll help you also keep everything safe so you're not overheating something around the stove where you're gonna cause a fire. This particular stove is made out of steel and it's got some fire brick, I think half inch fire brick inside of it, which will help maintain a little bit of the heat. All the specs and stuff of this stove are on their website and any stove you buy from anywhere, they're gonna have specs and you can compare them. Other than that, insulation wasn't too bad. Really, it's all figuring out the flue pipe system. That's the most work. And making sure that everything is sealed weather tight on the roof. For the top, we use high heat caulking. I riveted it to the roof because this is a metal roof. Everything has been great. We've had zero leaks anything like that so far after a year and a half we've been in rain snow everything when we're going down the road literally i just have a piece of plastic and one of these which i put over top of the hole and tighten down and that's all it takes that keeps the weather and the wind and everything out of it bugs after a year and a half my wife and i have been using this thing non-stop and now we have a new addition to the family so what are our thoughts about it basically we love the darn thing everybody that comes in and sees our trailer that's the first thing they noticed, you know, how adorable this little stove is. It's really cool to be able to see the fire. Look how tiny that thing is. It really makes this trailer feel like a home. It keeps us warm. For me, the smell of burning wood is also something that I grew up with, and so I can't get away from it. We've got oak and hickory and cherry, so we've got all the good smelling woods. Starting it can be challenging. This little tiny stove, when you open the door, you lose heat pretty fast, so if you're messing around, fumble around, trying to start it, and with it so small, things collapse easy. I used matches for the past year, and just recently I've been using the torch to get it started, because it's just so much easier. That's the biggest challenge with it, is just getting the fire started, just because it's so tiny, and you kind of fumble around in there. I did so much research leading into this, so if you have any questions about this stove, or anything with trying to heat your space, ask me in the comments. I love talking about this type of stuff. If you got any value out of this, hit subscribe and watch another video. Learn more about this crazy space and this crazy life we're living.